Okay, last video for chapter 12. Short video. He lowered his hands and put them on his hips. I saw him, he said. He's up there. What the hell's going... What the hell is he doing? I get the five grand, Charlie shouted. I found her. Ah, oh, shut up, McGraw grunted. He opened the car door and got into the front seat beside Slally. He looked down at her. Is Bentley going someplace? She stared up at him. Her eyes were large and her mouth a little circle. Can you tell me where he's going? McGraw asked gently. Slally turned her head and looked through the windshield at Charlie Phoebe standing beside the fire. Car doors were slamming in the darkness and men were walking past the cruiser toward Charlie. Slally looked back at McGraw. Her lips were trembling. She shook her head. McGraw sighed and picked up his radio microphone. Dick, do you read me? He turned a switch. The radio sparked and sputtered. A voice said, I read you. We found the girl, McGraw said, holding his microphone close to his mouth. The Ellicott kid's okay, but he's running someplace. We lost him. Call the family first and tell them both kids are all right. We're bringing Sally in. Then get a hold of Lee and Mac. Tell them to call it off where they are. I want every man out here in, in a half hour. We're on Copper Mill Road, three, four miles north of the highway. Got it? He turned the switch again. Got it, said Dick's voice in the receiver. Great news. Where do you want Mac and Lee to meet you? Before McGraw could turn the switch back, Polly's voice came over the speaker. God bless you, McGraw, she said softly. The police chief opened his microphone. I want everybody up at Pensionville. We've got a lot of territory to cover tonight, and make sure you send out every walkie-talkie we've got. Shall do, Dick said. McGraw hung up the microphone. He got out of the car. As he walked toward the cluster of men around the fire, he thought of what Polly had said. What in hell does God have to do with it? he asked himself. Then he wondered. He stopped at the fire and hitched up his trousers. Charlie, he said, I don't believe that an eight-year-old kid can grab a 12-gauge shotgun from a grown man, much less turn the thing on, on him and shoot. You calling me a liar? Charlie snarled. The men around the fire were looking at him. I'm calling you a liar, McGraw said. I don't believe the boy could, cli could climb up that rock face holding a shotgun. He didn't have any weapon in his hand when I saw him. I think you took a shot at him. Where's the gun, Charlie? He took it, Charlie answered. Grabbed it from my arm. Ask him where it is. I want my five thousand. McGraw looked at the men around him. You guys looked for the gun? Several heads nodded. Taint in the ditch, the man said. McGraw uh, looked back at Charlie Phoebe. I haven't got time to fool around with you. If you want $5,000, you walk yourself back to Stonehaven and we'll talk about it. I don't want you hanging around here. Go on home and stay away from that boy. Charlie walked down the dark road until the last car had backed past him. Then he returned to the fire. He stepped over the ditch, pushed his way three feet into the brush, and drew the shotgun from the crotch of a tree. He walked back down the road to the fork. He stopped. The moon was a cool radiance above the treetops. Charlie heard a sound, a slight sound to his left. He crouched and crept up the road on the center strip, raising his boots so that they wouldn't whip through the grass. In the pale cast of moonlight, he saw a pickup truck parked by the side of the road. A man, shaped in shadow, was standing on the road, one hundred yards beyond it. Charlie inched along Willie Bill's pickup truck. He reached inside, ran his hand down the steering shaft, and felt for the ignition key. It was there. He jumped in, cranked the windows, locked the doors, and switched on the lights. Gunned the engine, backed the fork, swung the truck around, and lurched ahead, gathering speed along the bumpy road. He hit the highway and turned west, the, the speedometer rising to 70. West was the direction the boy had gone. And that's it for chapter 12. Very exciting, I'm sure.